This is episode 666. So whether it's appropriate or not, we're going to cover SIN stocks. So first off, we're going to outline what are SIN stocks. We're going to dive into nine stocks to invest for the long term and define what the stock segments are. So tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, and so on. We're going to ask the question, are they worth it for the average investor? And look at some expected returns, some historical returns, and then recap the benefits of SIN stocks with four reasons that investing in SIN stocks are useful for your overall market strategy. And then look at the risks. Also look at four things that you should consider prior to investing in SIN stocks. All coming up on episode 666. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're looking at SIN stocks. So uh, as I mentioned, we're going to outline that first, talking about how SIN stocks are referring to shares of public companies engaging in a business or industry that's considered unethical, immoral, unsavory. Traditionally, the term has been applied to weapons, alcohol, gambling, tobacco, and finally, cannabis. When these come into play, we'll talk about that generally during the economic downturn uh, is when they come into play and we'll talk about why, uh, spoiler alert, it's because they're shunned. But essentially, SIN stocks are considered to be relatively recession-proof. So that is, companies are thought to be insulated from economic slowdowns because most people don't view their SINs as discretionary in a lot of cases, their addictions. So in reality, SIN stocks can enjoy temporary insulation from economic conditions, but they generally suffer when economic conditions impair consumers' ability to spend. In other words, uh, if they don't have money, they can't spend it. Although what we saw with cannabis being deemed essential and essentially everyone being laid off and the economy shut down, we're still seeing cannabis at all-time highs. So maybe there's some priority shifts, not really sure, but with the help of government money, we're still seeing this. But once that gets cut off, uh, what this is saying is essentially a lot of these uh, vice stocks suffer because people have to cut back on them. Over the long term, SIN stocks are going to perform well because consumers return quickly to their vices when the economy improves and spend aggressively during those times. So no accident that vice stocks do well in economic climates. People party, smoke, and gamble in good times and bad. They just do it for different reasons. So traders can take advantage of this and invest in weapons manufacturers or alcohol you know, spirits, distributors or tobacco, gambling, and now cannabis companies, all to try to protect their portfolios during economic downturns. We're starting to see some cracks, all-time highs, and signs that there may be uh, an end to this historic um, longest bull run in history. It's got to come to an end at some point, right? So how do you protect that? Well, let's look at SIN stocks. SIN stocks, although generally shunned, they do have a lot of positives, including being recession-proof, generating strong, consistent earnings, uh, generally speaking, and having limited competition. So not surprising, there's a UBS research that found 50 largest SIN stocks greatly outperformed the MSCI World Index. So over the last 43 years, outperforming that global index by 5% annually. So there's also been a slide in performance over the last couple of years, and that's probably crypto or you know other alternatives. People are looking at alt finance or alternative investments. So companies are generally paying uh, really good dividends. So Altria, that's uh, the manufacturer of Marlboro. So they gave their investors 20% annual returns on average since 1968. So that's a pretty amazing record for dividends. So all while growing dividend payments, you have um, Spirits. So uh, Diago, they've been uh, giving 10% annual returns over the last 10 years and paid out nearly 40% of the purchase price in cash dividends alone. So despite that, there's a lot of investors that have excluded SIN stocks because they don't want to invest in it, uh, they don't want to be associated with it, or they have a SIN clause that doesn't allow them to participate in that. So some other explanations for the abnormal returns in SIN stocks is that they have systematically underpriced because so many investors shun them. So this is kind of one theory that we're going to take a look at um, as people don't invest in that and, to, and, and look away from SIN stocks. That's obviously enabling investors who are willing to invest in SIN stocks 
uh, going against social norms and uh, and conformities, they're earning a reputation risk premium. In other words, uh, explaining sin stock industries could benefit from monopolistic returns or that stocks face increased litigation risk uh, for investors that are rewarded if or when that doesn't happen. So let's take a look at the nine sin stocks to invest for the long run. First up is advisor shares. So that's a general vice uh, ETF. Um, doing the worst out of all of them because they do incorporate other things um, outside of cannabis uh, and not doing as well as they maybe should. Constellation Brands is maybe another one you want to take a look at. Uh, they have alcohol beverage marketing companies with over 40 facilities and 9,000 workers. They've invested $4.5 up in Canada for um, infused cannabis beverages alone. So they could be a global leader in that. Diago, as we mentioned, ticker symbol DEO, one of the world's largest alcohol distillers. Popular brands are Smirnoff, Johnny Walker's, Guinness, and they pay a massive dividend, like we mentioned, 10% per year. So ETFMG, Alternative Harvest Index, a ticker symbol MJ, one of the competitors that we have to our uh, AI-based automated algorithmic trading. MJ is doing really well this year. Last year, they were down like 56% for the year. This year, they're up like 89% or something, 98, something like that. Uh, iShares, they're an aerospace and defense company. Some people include defense and some don't when looking at SIN stocks. So um, it is looked at differently, but essentially um, if you are going to try and get a broad base and not go after Boeing, Lockheed Martin and individual uh, equities, you can just go after an ETF like um, ITA is a ticker symbol for iShares, US Aerospace and Defense ETF. Or you can go for an individual equity like Smith & Wesson, ticker symbol SWBI. Ammo is um, sold out. Good luck finding that. I don't know if that's because of you know, the potential zombie apocalypse that people are, are looking at or Homeland Security literally buying um, millions and trillions of, of rounds for whatever reason, their own zombie apocalypse. Um, there's a gaming ETF, the VanEck sectors. It's ticker symbol BJK. Gaming is interesting. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit, but um, not doing so hot if you've been to Vegas. And if you haven't, then maybe you know why. So um, maybe look at something a little more stable, like the Vanguard Consumer Staple Index Fund, ticker symbol VDC. Uh, that's going to look at consumer staples, the things that are necessary. So kind of the opposite of advice, but um, maybe hedging that in itself. So Altria Group, we mentioned massive dividends. Um, U.S. Tobacco, though, not a fan, um, obviously, but um, I do day trade that uh, through our, our algorithm. So, um, yeah. We're trying to make some money, not trying to, to support this company with long-term investments, just day trading. So Marlboro, popular brand, and consistently offer dividends. I think we mentioned 40%, which is kind of crazy. So let's take a look at um, individual sectors. So we looked at some companies. We're going to take a look at uh, individual sectors and starting with firearms because it's pretty hot right now. Um, sales are on the rise. There's massive demand. And as of date, um, the, the firearm industry is subject to change with the regulations. I think uh, NRA filed bankruptcy to protect themselves from Biden, who uh, announced that he wants to shut them down. So you've got Smith and Wesson. Uh, they're the leading handgun provider in the U.S. You have Sturm and Rutger, uh, Ruger, sorry, uh, Ruger, that ticker symbol RGR, they're a semi-automatic weapons and pistol company. Um, there's only two ammo manufacturers in the U.S. It's Olin, O-L-N, and Alliant Technologies, A-T-K. So Olin manufactures and sells ammunition and powder, while Alliant Technologies, they sell powder ammunition and reloading equipment. Moving on to gambling. So apart from economic conditions, the casino stocks had a difficult run, uh, obviously with the shutdown and everything. So um, a lot of states have now uh, legalized some form of gambling. And so that kind of puts out Las Vegas and Atlantic City that have put in a ton of money. So on top of that, you've got several international casino hotspots like Macau, uh, Hong Kong. So nevertheless, the casino giants uh, do well sometimes. Uh, we'll kind of get into that towards the end when we recap. Um, they don't do as well as the rest. So take that um, to, to note. And if you do want to move forward, take a look at Las Vegas Sands, um, MGM Grand, The Win, Boyd Gaming, 
Penn National Gaming and Isle of Capri Casinos. Uh, tobacco, you know, not a fan, obviously being in, in cannabis, uh, they've kind of put uh, the industry down for a long time. So there's a declining sales are all moving towards vape. Um, and that's an opportunity to kind of uh, rake in some cash there. So Companies have consolidated, concentrating efforts on developing overseas markets. So there's Reynolds American RAI, best known for a, um, Camel and Cool and Pall Mall. Philip Morris, PM, known for Marlboro. And then British tobacco company BTI has Lucky Strike. Imperial Tobacco, largest seller of cigars and fine cut tobaccos. Maybe they'll get into blunts, who knows. But Altria MO, um, they have a U.S. smokeless tobacco company as well. We, we do day trade MO. So ironically, the stocks of tobacco companies have at times performed better than the pharmaceutical companies making cancer drugs to combat smoking-related illnesses, but we're not covering pharma. Um, alcohol, publicly traded brewers and retailers of beer, wine, liquor make up another classic sin stock category. So the spirits and alcohol distillers industry, they've gone through a consolidation period, most notably InBev. Uh, they acquired Anheuser-Busch, but you have Boston Beer, you have Molson Coors, uh, there's Fortune Brands, known for Jim Bean, and then uh, Brown Foreman of uh, Finlandia and Jack Daniels. Diago, we mentioned, they uh, have brands like Johnny Walker. So some sin stocks that people don't actually talk about is lust. So we obviously know that sex sells, but it's kind of a tough market to cover. There was the, a, a military vet, uh, LGBTQ member and um, inventor of the dick pipe. <laughs> I, I came across him at Canacon and he had a really hard time, pun intended, to get this dick pipe into the market. Um, and he's still struggling. It's That's the really importance of a strategic partnership. But um, even though there is a market, it's kind of hard to uh, get in there. <laughs> So there's a low barrier to entry for pornography and burlesque, which can make margins difficult, but that doesn't mean that there aren't giants in the industry like Hugh Hefner. So you, PLA is a ticker symbol for that. Uh, Spain-based private media group um, or uh, Rick's Cabaret International and New Frontier Media, which is a pornog pornographer, film producer, uh, if that's what you want to invest in. Again, tobacco, uh, so they've been a target for decades for um, health campaigns against anti-smoking, uh, frequent subject to sin taxes, but um, a considerable portion of the American public continues to puff away. And in um, Asia specifically, I think Europe is still uh, heavily smokers, but um, uh, cannabis, I think, is going to be kind of the new thing that they all invest in. So short term for cannabis, it's still kind of being written out, but the long term outlook for the sector remains incredibly strong. We saw that uh, right after the elections when everything popped, massive cash inflows into the cannabis industry when they saw that the House and Senate and president went to Democratic. And so we're all kind of looking at federal legalization at some point. If Mexico and Israel legalize, then it's going to put even more more pressure on the U.S. We did mention Philip Morris. There's Anheuser-Busch and Diago. There's Altria. Constellation Brands, we mentioned huge investment in beverages in Canada, Las Vegas Sands, um, Red Rock Resorts, Boyd Gaming. There's also miscellaneous sins, um, categories that we already talked about are traditional, but trying to create additional groups around the classics. So under sloth, uh, if you look at sloth as a sin, uh, lazy, whatever, you could look um, at video game stocks like Electronic Arts or Take-Two Interactive. Uh, if you're looking at uh, World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, um, you could look at that as the anger uh, sin. Um, gluttony, you can look at McDonald's, Krispy Kreme. Um, but the, the ir ironic part about all of it is that regulations, so regulations can actually help those that are already in the business or incumbent companies. So for example, you got states that issue a limited number of uh, gambling licenses that keeps rivals out, tiered alcohol distribution system that keeps a lot of a limited competition. You have reduced competition that can make industries more profitable. Um, same thing is going to happen with cannabis, right? So we had 1,400 growers in Washington state. That's now down to about 450. But how many tomato farmers do you know in the, that are 450 in another state? 
Um, Oregon has way too much. There's 7,500 licenses in Oklahoma. Um, good luck with that. That's a nightmare waiting to happen. A lot of consolidation there. So having said all of that, uh, um, since stocks could be frowned upon continuously for whatever reason, as this kind of evolves and looks at some inefficiencies, but also providing investment opportunities. You could go east uh, on the East Coast and look at emerging markets. You can go west and look at distressed assets. Some of these companies are ripe for consolidation in Oregon and eventually, uh, you know, in, I almost said Kentucky, maybe that was a Freudian slip, but in Oklahoma, um, I, I mentioned Kentucky because they have the the least funded pension plan, so they'll be legalizing eventually. That's that's my bet for this year's. They've got to start talking about that right away. Um, so if you are going to look at it um, at cannabis and sin stocks, you have to ask the question: Is it worth it for the average investor? So creating part of your portfolio in sin stocks that can be a profitable investment strategy. You have to do it the right way, though. So be aware that sin stocks generally attract a lower number of investors. So a lot of people have reservations about investing in cannabis being unethical or otherwise. It doesn't mean that the company can't perform well and provide a reasonable rate of return, but you should consider the higher risk and liquidity issues. So Penny stocks are a great example. I don't touch penny stocks. People ask me all the time about my opinion. And my opinion is if it's 0. 0.00 something, it's worthless. Go ahead and gamble. Like, I don't care about, I'm not going to blow on your dice at the casino, right? I'm not going to tell you what my opinion is on something that's literally worthless. Um, if that's your thing, go for it. But the volume is really important. Without volume, you're not going to have uh, the transaction activity necessary to keep that stock price going uh, for the foreseeable future. So as a pragmatic investor, we always advise that you should be open to the possibility of investing in SIN stocks, especially if you want uh, to make a good profit from it. You just have to do your due diligence and stop looking at sin, um, penny stocks. So um, before we, we burn this one down, we're going to give a little summary. I want to talk about what the expected returns are. So the historical returns are important to kind of look at to see, um, do these in fact give a, a better return overall during an economic downturn? So there's an economic theory suggesting that share prices of sin businesses become depressed if a large enough portion of investors choose to avoid them becoming the shunned stock hypothesis. So as, as institutional investors don't invest in it, there's a discount like by 20% or whatever, because they're not buying it. So higher returns to buy stocks occurred because they're more profitable and less wasteful with investment than the average corporation. Uh, Sin stock alpha remains highly significant after controlling for the size value and momentum factors. And that means that uh, sin stocks move uh, higher and faster than the overall base market. And especially for IPOs, they're even more underpriced than non sin stock firms uh, by about 23%. So the shun stock hypothesis has the flip side benefit to it. There's a lot of <clears throat> social responsibility investing or environmental social governance or ESG investing, that's gaining popularity. But what you're seeing is opportunity cost as well. So there's sin stocks that have a higher cost of capital because they trade at a lower price to earnings, providing investors with a higher expected return. So some of those investors are um, looking at higher expectations and compensation for the emotional cost of the exposure to offensive companies, those immoral, sinful companies. Um, but is the theory supported by historical evidence? So let's take a look to see if that in fact is true, that sin stocks do have um, historical advantages during economic downturns. Looking at some of that, those examples, there was a study that came out showing a period between 1965 through 2006 with the U.S. portfolio of SIN stocks returning 3.48% per year. Uh, SIN stocks in seven large European markets and Canada also outperformed SIN stocks by about 2.5% per year. And so the authors of that study concluded that the abnormal risk adjusted returns of vice stocks or SIN stocks are due to negligence by institutional investors who lean towards the side of social responsibility investing. 
So a lot of this capital comes not from mom and pops or retail investors, it comes from the institutional investors, the brick and mortars. And when they don't look at it during normal bull markets, then they're missing out. They're looking at value and opportunities during economic downturns. And that's when they you know, basically shut the door to social responsibility investing and go after whatever makes sense and whatever they can make money off of. So further evidence is showing that avoiding sin stocks comes out of price. There's another report that came out showing um, that 115 year old period from 1900 through 2014 tobacco firms beat the overall equity market by an annualized four and a half percent in the US and 2.6% in the UK. More evidence 2017, there was a Fewer reasons to send five-factor investigation of vice stocks, which covered the period from October of 96 to October of 2016, and showed that uh, while the S&P 500 index returned 7.8% per year, the vice fund returned 11.5%. And the author of that study concluded that the higher returns to vice stocks occurred because they're more profitable and less wasteful with investment than the average corporation. Not so much with cannabis. We we're seeing, you know, a billion dollars on Aurora, three billion on Canopy, uh, just being thrown out. So not so much. Um, they're still trying to figure some things out. But maybe with old school alcohol, old school tobacco, they're definitely not um, wasteful with their money. So um, IPOs. So we mentioned that sin stock IPOs are more underpriced by twenty two point three percent than non IPO or non sin stock IPOs. But in particular, gaming stocks uh, experience large underpricing. So they don't do that well right now and haven't for the last few years. However, if there are any IPOs in gaming, there is an opportunity to trade on that, uh, not necessarily long term. So authors of, uh, of that study said that sin stocks tend to be more underpriced. So as societal norms in the legal environment continue to evolve in North America and abroad, investment managers need to understand how these assets behave in order to assess the benefits of the reputational risk premium versus the potential non-cash costs like negative publicity, uh, all because of investing in non-traditional asset classes like SIN stocks. So what are the benefits? Let's dive into some of the benefits. There's four reasons uh, for investment in SIN stocks and how it can be useful to your overall market strategy. Number one, uh, there's better value. So if you go through and research SIN stocks, you're going to find that a lot of businesses are financially stable, but their prices don't really reflect that. And so there's some value in there. So investors who specifically ignore and avoid investments in SIN, they're called environmental social governance, ESG that we covered. And SIN stocks are generally shunned by these institutional investors. So lower demand keeps the price down, regardless of how well the company is performing. And that uh, undervaluation of SIN stocks represents an opportunity for pragmatic investors who can get a good deal and create a good portfolio. Number two is that there's better predictability. The demand pattern for vice companies are more predictable than regular businesses. So the demand is inelastic. It doesn't move. Um, you know, maybe you have other priorities, but typically vices people stick to. So sense stocks present a relatively safer investment option because there's less uncertainty with those businesses and demand is stable. Defensive investments. So firearms closely linked to the U.S. government defense expenditure. So over the last 30 years, the defense budget has either increased or, or stayed the same. So a lot of the defense spending is invested in long-term projects that can uh, generate positive cash flow uh, if you're into supporting the military industrial complex. Number four is huge investments. So less uh, investment analysts are performing studies on SIN stocks to look at their historical performance. And the explanation was that SIN stocks actually do pay returns higher than other companies. However, SIN stocks um, are underpriced and the rate of return on the actual investment goes up and makes them seem more lucrative than regular shares. Another explanation was that SIN industries benefit from monopolistic returns as a lot of entrepreneurs are unwilling to enter those industries. And this leaves the door open for existing businesses to create long, um, you know, strong brands and, and improve their profits. What are the risks though? Obviously, there's some risk investing in SIN stocks. Let's kind of dive in and see what the SIN stock risks are. 
obviously every investment has some risks and sin stocks are no different. So interesting, the risk for some businesses don't come from consumers, but government regulators and the legislative bodies. So businesses operating in the sins sectors that are legal, there are questions associated with their ethical nature. You have societal pressures and demands uh, for groups to, um, you know, shut them down constantly. Uh, like the alcohol industry went through a prohibition period. Now it's not cannabis, same thing about to flip over. So you want to take um, a look at regulatory risk all the time. We always say that you should do your due diligence. So take some reasonable steps to look at sin stocks uh, without taking on too much risk. So there are some things that you want to consider. Number one, do not invest in sin stocks only operating in one area. So um you know, that's why you want to diversify your portfolio. That's why you want to look at ETFs. That's the whole point of that. Um, so diversify. You want to keep an eye on consumer trends. That's why we uh, report on that so often on how post-COVID is changing consumer preferences and demand and the way that they buy, what they're buying uh, from delivery to bulk purchases and et cetera. Uh, so it's important to kind of know what's going on and some of the uh, shifting in gears, like from smoking to vaping, for example. So if you're seriously wanting to invest in sin stocks, you should keep an eye out for consumer trends in that industry. Stay up to date about it so you can kind of avoid some potential uh, regulations as well. And then adjust your strategy accordingly to make those trends uh, around government policies. Also, um, you want to consider the market pragmatically. Take account for how other investors are thinking, but don't get caught up in what others are saying about it. So that's the whole problem with YouTube is it's not even legal to give financial advice. So all these guys are not financial advisors, including myself. I used to be, but I'm not. <clears throat> this is not advice. It's this only is only entertainment. entertainment. So to make a profit in sin stocks, you should be rational and look at the business in terms of performance and profit and not just speculation. You got a lot of people who are just buying the dips. They have no idea what they're doing. There is no fundamentals. Fundamentals have been dead. If you're not a technical trader, you're a gambler. So look at the liquidity risk. You have to have an exit strategy. So being able to buy and sell something is fine, but when everyone's trying to get out at the same time, you got to make sure that uh, you know your trailing stop loss is set or whatever that you're paying attention. So... For that reasons, you want to look at volume and liquidity and make sure you can get out. So bottom line, Sinsox, they're offering a unique set of opportunities and risk, but generally they're undervalued in the market because a select group of investors avoids buying them. Makes an average return on these shares very lucrative for investors. However, Sinsox are riskier because their products are considered a cause of social vice and problems. Mm -hmm. So the business has to ensure its operations are licensed and don't fall out the wrong side of the law. Make sure that they're compliant, DTC eligible. If it's five digits ending in F, you want to do even more research on that. Uh, yeah, come back to the Talking Hedge to find out more. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. I appreciate you guys uh, watching it's episode 666. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.